Hey everybody, it's uh, April 18th. I always have to look. April 18th, and you are at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. Good to see everybody here. Um, just a quick reminder, this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind as you interact with us. And we, of course, do not care if you have your cameras on or off. We don't care. We're pretty easy here. Um, let's share. There we go. So if you could add your name to the agenda and um, if anybody needs the minutes in the chat, I'm sure somebody can drop them in there. Um, tell us if you could invent a holiday, what it would be and what you would call it. Matt, I have good news for you. Every day's coffee day. Yes, <laughs> it is. there is actually an international coffee day. Oh, well. Well, I'm there you go. Daily the coffee day. <laughs> Matt the visionary. Daily <laughs> coffee day every day. Yes. Oh, these are nice. Litter pickup day. Oh, I like that. Chill day. Yes. Same. Like that. In an, oh, yes. I would absolutely participate in this sloth forest day. I am in, obsessed with them. They are. Yes. I. They are my vibe. I'm waiting to see what Sean has here with bated breath. Oh, okay. This looks complicated. No, that's too many words. <laughs> I was expecting it to be like some kind of superhero day where no, we no, I to be I, superheroes. I want, I want every week to include super day, which is the third day attached to the weekend between Saturday and Sunday. Um, and each day would be an eight day week. So, we would have fewer weeks in the year, more days and more days off routinely. I, I could support that. It's yeah. all about making the world a better place. Yeah, I support that effort. When you put that on some ballot somewhere, Sean, I will absolutely vote for that. <laughs> Just let me know where it sure. is. Petition, I will sign. Yes. I, I'm hopeful democracy can influence calendaring. <laughs> We'll be lucky just to get rid of daylight savings. I think oh, that's yeah. <laughs> first stuff. And then, then we'll work on the three day weekend. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's jump in. Um, Mary Blessing, I think, would like to give us an update on the Chaos Tour Guides as soon as she's done giving us her, <laughs> her holiday. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I don't know. I'm joining you with my phone so I I won't be able to like share my screen. That's all right. If it is red if you can do that for me at home. I would love to. Where should I go? Where do you want me to go? Uh if you can drop it in the chat just to make sure I share yeah, yeah, sure. the right document. Yeah sure sure give me a Mary Blessing, should we go on? I didn't mean to put you first and like put you on the spot. If, if we need to go on and you can come back, is that, would that be okay? Or are you ready to go? You put it in the chat. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I just I just shared the first document. It's two. I'm trying to fetch the other one. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. That's fine. <laughs> I was supposed to do this last week, I guess, but I just wasn't available. There we go. Yeah. Do you want to start with the okay. flow or? Uh, okay, let's start with the flow. Okay. All right. So, um, um, hi, hi everyone. So for the, for the flow, right? Um, Myself and Roots, we decided that this could be like um, an internal doc for the tour guide, um, you know, members. 
members of the tour guide, right? So after being onboarded, so this is like an internal doc we could hand over to them to, um, they could use to, you know, um, onboard, you know, new contributors and new um, chaos um, community members. So um, it has introduction and I try to like, explicitly like, um, say what each of the um, communication channels we have, what is this, but uh, I think the newsletter is like out of it now because um, I think it is, let's say something around, you know, we not, not that, that's not functional at the moment. So um, I also, um, I also like put together um, the like things we'd love them to do, which is pretty much updating their profiles. I mean, that's, that's very optional, right? And, you know, introduce themselves in the new commerce channel. Then, um, so there's something about, um, so I, I recently um, had like a conversation with some community members on how, um, on their onboarding and, you know, what they would like us to like improve on. And some of them talked about um, that, um, when they joined in, they weren't sure um, which of the channels to go to. I mean, aside the newcomer channel, which is like very obvious, you could introduce yourself there. So I, I thought, okay, maybe if we have like an explanation, brief explanation of what each of these channels is about, it's probably going to give them a sense of, you know, where to go um, and, you know, what kind of info to share on such channels, right? I also put together the community calendar where they could find it um, and just a simple guide on how they could contribute to the chaos project, right? Then I was hoping we could have like a, a resource bank, you know, where we could touch on things like getting started with Ogo, um, Grimor Lab, um, and the event badging, um, yeah, so, and also, you know, the different teams in chaos and the people handling it, right? So that's that for the flow. So I, I was really hoping we'll probably take a look at it and anyone and everyone could share their feedback on that. So Mary Blessing, so thanks for all this work. Um, is, this, is this a document that would be shared with a newcomer or is this something that a tour guide is this like a, a guide for the tour guides yes yes so it's an internal doc okay give to the tour guide yes gotcha that helps thank you give me some context I don't know if any of us is taking a look at it and if anyone has any comments or, I mean, we could take our time. <laughs> yeah, I think the one, um, Venya had a comment. It seems like a okay. great guide option to put in the community roles playbook, similar what, to what Don Foster and I were wanting to do in addition to the um, board documentation to be honest I think it's a good structure to expand to other roles Benya do you want to comment on that or yeah so uh Dawn and I met a week and a half ago and I kind of feel like I made her job more complicated unfortunately but um what she was wanting to do was make some modifications to the onboarding process and the role of stuff and uh she had to like modify board documentation so I'm like oof I'm gonna wait on that then um, but we had this idea of breaking out from the board documentation, which has to be verified on the regular basis, um, the detail for the structure of working groups and geological chapters, because um, we seem to have like this con conflict of the working groups and the chapters are two completely independent nodes for the organization. So how do you structure the work across those chapters and across those working groups to make sense in a playbook for newcomers to come in and be like, oh, so this is where I can live. Um, so the idea was to build a community charter that includes all that documentation, yeah, sure, but it breaks itself down into a community playbook where it's like, here are the different roles and allocations, the different micro tasks and stuff like that you, that you can do divided by chapter. 
um, so that you can immediately find the people that you want to talk to and then get started. So I kind of feel like Mary Blessing created that for um, this particular document. And we could just borrow the infrastructure created here for all of the other roles. So I think, see the top of page two, Enya, the chaos governance updates. I yeah. think that's what you're, I think this is exactly what you're talking about. So about, and we've, we've been kind of having this conversation just in a variety of working groups then just bring it here, I think for the first time, you know what I mean? Just to kind of circulate this. So I think it aligns with exactly what you're talking about. That's the document that Don was working on that governance updates doc, which yeah. would be the one that's like, that needs to be approved by the board, but it doesn't have a lot of the detail that you're talking about, which are like, who are the people and what which are is, the things of the working groups and all that. And that's, that's intentional. So we don't have to vote on it every time we change it. Exactly. But this yeah. document could uh, could be used. So when Don and I were talking, we were thinking about like, so the governance update stock needs to be kept very um, lean. But if we want to get people involved moving from a national working group concept to a chapter based concept, it would behoove us to put together a playbook where people could assign those roles especially since as chaos is growing, we're running into this burden of allocation problem, which is the notion that we're, we've got a small group of people accepting responsibilities, but a large majority of the community and newcomers, um, they wanna be allocated roles and allocated tasks on a time by time basis instead of having a larger commitment. Um, so this would be a really, really great way to transition them from being a newcomer, allocating tasks into responsibilities if and when they feel ready. Mary Blessing, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna point out, if, if this is an internal document, Mary Blessing, uh, it might make sense can you go back to it, Elizabeth? Thanks. Um, to really identify what the tour guides think is the critical path through here. So for example, there's a lot of information in this and a lot of different ways that people can be introduced to the chaos project. Um, and so, or like, maybe not critical path, like, lowest bar path or easiest, most accessible path, something like that, um, that people can, newcomers can understand really, really easily and like engage with really, really quickly. Um, and so what I mean is like, we have that, that document on the webpage for newcomers, you know, the getting started one, Elizabeth, and it's mm -hmm. like, here are three things to do, like join our Slack channel, attend a weekly meeting, you know, for a month, something that is just really accessible for folks. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. I, I'm, my, my concern would be is that if a tour guide gave a newcomer like all of this stuff, it would be a lot to take in. And so that's what I'm just trying to say, like, is there something in here that has, contains all this stuff, but like here, like in each one of these sections, you know, kind of here are the like points that are probably the ones that are, that are most critical or the easiest ones to participate in, something like that. And just a point of note, I think that last, I, if I remember correctly, the tour guides would kick in after someone has already done like the basic stuff so okay. they would have had to do something i see okay. yeah so i think it's okay to have more that's helpful uh, but I, right. no no i totally understand what you're saying though matt like maybe we could have like a high level something like a tldr <laughs> and then yeah. like more information armstrong go for it yeah thank you elizabeth and matt i really like the idea that you outlined there just to add something, you know, some uh, newcomers or people might be shy, that might be going through a lot, joining a new community, reaching out to a growing community like this sometimes can be done things. So one way of just to add something, it's 
we could assign some people that have already been doing some great work. For example, Elizabeth, Ruth, and many others, uh, Precious, all of these people have been really doing great work in the community. They can just say hi to these new people. Just open a conversation to see how engaged they could be. Because we have seen this in the past and in some other communities, some people with great potentials, but that opening up and to really get into bringing their value out of them, they just need a handshake. I'm not talking about physical handshake here, just somebody can just reach out to them. Is there something specific you like to contribute in the community? Just open the conversation and that can tweak a lot in those people. That's just what I want to. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. that's what that's really what this is focusing on, Armstrong. So is that that welcoming hand, and that's the tour guide folks. So do you, Armstrong? Do you think there's in that like, you know, shaking hands metaphorically? Do you think there's something in that initial interaction that would be really critical? You know, as a person reaches out to Elizabeth or Ruth or whomever the other tour, Mary Blessing, whomever the other tour guides might be. Okay. I mean, what we have already, it's it's good. It's just a way of doing, you know, it more informally. Um, it's really good. I like the newcomers approach. Yeah. Cool. Kevin? So the... The chaos, as as was kind of discussed earlier, there are a lot of there are a lot of different parts of chaos, right? Different the the chapters, the the working groups. It's uh, I mean, I've been here since the beginning, and even for for me, uh, it it can be confusing where things are happening and what people or what's happening in those groups. So, uh, I'm wondering if the uh, if the main the main thing we want to get at when we're welcoming newcomers is is matching them with that different types with the different types of work that they might be interested in doing right so is the is the first thing that comes in is it maybe not is it maybe not us telling them things is it maybe is it maybe more us asking them questions about where they would fit is there a way to do that i i would say that that's definitely part of it and um, we didn't really get to this part of the of, of Mary Blessing's um, discussion, but I think this does kind of, well, not kind of, it absolutely does outline what the program is for and how it works and what the goals are and everything. Um, and I think yeah. that that's part of what you're saying, Kevin, is like the tour guides would be a little more one on one and like helping actually direct folks to where they should go. But go ahead, Mary Blessing, if you want to talk about this document it would be great. Oh, okay, cool. So, so this particular document is um is going to be on the website. So it's for folks who want to be tour guides in chaos. Um, maybe not sure how to you know contribute to the project. Um, they could also contribute by being a tour guide. So this particular doc applies like the program description, the goals, like what we're trying to achieve with the program, the mission, and you know how they could get involved, and it also lists out um, names and how to contact um, you know already existing tour guides. So it's just a very brief document that, and their roles, like their responsibilities, what they would be doing if they eventually become a tour guide in the chaos community. So yeah. So I think I think something we did not land on, correct me if I'm wrong, is how does a newcomer request a tour guide? Yes. Um, I don't know. There was something I put um, at the last, if you scroll down. So yes, we really did not land on that. Did they, did they maybe send a message on Slack or did they open up an issue on GitHub, that's going to be a long process. Or they go through the discourse route uh, on the forum. We really have not considered on that. Right, so, and the selection process is that, you know, I know we are going to like onboard them and um, share with them useful resources before they could start officially, you know, welcoming other new members. But we also have not, you know, finalized on that. For the selection process, do you 
think it would be easy if somebody say in the newcomer channel could just say I would like a tour guide <laughs> just as simple as that and then we would reach out to that person with an individual you know what I mean as opposed to reaching out to say directly to you Elizabeth that might be a little bit that might be a lot to ask somebody who's new to just reach directly out to the community manager uh, but it might be a little bit lower bar if, if they could just say it, you know, like if I'm, you know, I would love a tour guide. <laughs> like, yeah, that's all I have to yeah. say. And, and then we would reach out. Yeah. And I think, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, I did not realize I joined with the chaos community. It's really oh. cool. Well, hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. So for the going back to the onboarding, I know uh, Elizabeth and I kind of like talked about restructuring how we do the onboarding sessions, the monthly onboarding sessions we've been doing for quite a while, um, where we were having like people, one, two persons just show up. And so we kind of wanted to restructure that into like having people um, sign up to attend the onboarding and then we bring people together, let's like say five, 10, and then do a specific onboarding for those people. Now, um, with this tour guides, um, something that I think we can do, because I feel that if we say on the newcomers channel, who wants a tour guide? Everybody's going to raise their hands up. Probably and, so, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, and we don't want to start with overwhelming the people that have signed up to be tour guides, right? We want to do it on a, you know, a slow basis at the start so that we get to learn from the process so something we can do is this um, which is i dropped it on the comments um, on this document is for for the persons that we successfully onboard that attend these onboarding sessions because we are creating this program in um to help newcomers and then they also have to help us um, indicate interest right because there's a lot of effort that will go into the tour guide program like a lot of like personal um, effort from our tour guides so um the people that attend the onboarding sessions during the onboarding sessions we tell them about the tour guide and then they indicate interest to be part of it and we take note of that maybe through um maybe through um a form or something and then we assign tour guides to them so I feel having going through that onboarding process they have some idea of what chaos is and then the the tour guide takes takes over with helping them um you know understand where they can contribute or how they can participate or groups that they can they can join in so because if we just put it at the very um low level where anybody can just come in and actually talk i will get like a lot of application you get a lot of people and it will be overwhelming at some point that's what, what i wanted to armstrong did you have another comment or was your hand still up from before Oh, sorry, I did not turn it out, but I'll just add something from what Ruth said. Yeah, that's good. One other way that uh, communities can uh, enrich themselves, like making sustainable mentorship program, is also to, when we give this uh, onboarding program to new folks, we try to engage them in the next cohort of themes. You can select one or two to be part of those who are helping new people to onboard because the best teacher is a student. When you are learning to explain, you are learning in that process, you become stronger. And then we also grow in a pool of mentors. So people now who really love doing those things now just pick up from the old mentors and they are also learning within the process. That uh, method has really been shown to be more effective in open source as well. Sorry, let me turn down my hand, Elizabeth. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. That was totally awesome comment. I totally, totally agree. Um, Mary Blessing, you had your hand up next. Go for it. Yeah, so the idea of the selection process was supposed to be how to select the tour guys um, themselves. But it looks like with the whole conversation that just happened, we've 
um, shifts the direction as to what that um, initially was when I was putting that together. But that's fine too. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> But uh, I think I think for the tour guide selection, we we already have some awesome people that have signed up. So I think we um people can also sign up as well. But I think the the overwhelming part would be the mentees or the is there anyone like guide the guide was I don't know what the people participating participants. I think it's on yeah. Yeah, that's my fault. I started typing yeah. that section. Sorry. <laughs> now that you say that, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what she meant. Oh, my bad. Um, ben, yeah, you have your hand up, too. You've had it up for a while. Go for it. Yeah, I feel like the uh, the program has kind of ballooned, and I really like the idea of the newcomer uh, tour. Um, we also discussed, like, a while ago, looking into a mentorship program proper. So as it stands right now, it is very organic, and we don't want to lose out on that organic aspect, but we need the ability for mentors to start building and training newcomers. And I brought up um, a while ago the idea of using a red cup process, uh, which is very common in Unitarian Universalist congregations where if you're a newcomer to the congregation at the coffee hour, you grab a blue cup. And if you don't wanna be a mentor, you grab a white cup. And if you are a veteran in the congregation and you feel really comfortable and you would like to move into a mentorship, you grab a red and black cup. And essentially the red and black cups seek out the blue cups and then introduce them to the white cups, which works really, really well. If we were able to create a handoff similar to that, that works into the onboarding process that we already have, I also feel like all we need to do is create an automation process that gives us our black, white, and blue cups. And then we could build this entire mentorship and tour guide program at the same time. I feel like right now it's very, very ballooned, but we could easily make this into a well-crafted, boiled down, very efficient, onboarding process that includes a mentorship component. Um, so I popped one down below. I know that, um, I do apologize, I'm going to butcher your name, but Ildeco has a Slack for newcomers process already built. Um, so I've proposed a flow in the chat that we could possibly use, and we would basically build this into the orientation meeting. So as people want to set up an orientation meeting, we send a confirmation for them joining that orientation to say, great, sounds like you're set up, but if you would like a little bit more help, how would you feel about joining our one-on-one -on -one mentor-led tour program? And then you could run a program where they submit and agree to do that. It shoots a Calendly uh, account to Elizabeth. And then that Calendly account, once it comes into your inbox, Elizabeth, it just automatically sends an email out to mentors to request that someone uh, meet with that time slot. Once that someone says yes, you just swap your name out with them and you're good. So it's, um, I think I'm hearing something very similar to the program that uh, Precious reviewed for us, but, or Mary, Mary Blessing reviewed for us. I'm losing track of my stuff. But, um, just with more explicit coordination of the connection between the newcomer and the the mentor. Yeah. Which we call a badger, or no, we don't we call it a um, rabbit with hat. Exactly. Um, um, and there is an option. We could use Orbit, which is not to be confused with Orbit. Uh, <laughs> um, so Orbit basically powers one-on-one -on -one connections between different community members. Uh, if I remember correctly, Common Room used it for a while and then decided to drop it um, because they didn't hugely find it useful. But this is exactly the use case that that technology prefers. I think we can definitely look into this a little bit more. Um, we do have some other things to talk about today, but um, I would also just um, put out there that we have about one one to three new folks joining Slack every single day. So I just want to be mindful of the like the volume of newcomers versus like those of us who can field and coordinate 
those things. So I, I'm really glad to see this list here because <laughs> like it's just hard for me to like reach out to every single person, which I, I, I wish I could. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to see this list. So I would love to see this grow exponentially as well so that every single person does get that personalized like, hey, welcome to chaos. We're really glad you're here because we feel that it's just hard to communicate that with every single newcomer that comes. So um, is it okay if we continue this conversation um, maybe next week or async? We all, is that good? Yeah, let's start async and then maybe we can talk again next week. Because this is really great. And I'm going to make sure we capture this here. Um, yeah, um, if you want to set up and send out a doodle poll, I think that this would be a good opportunity. We could also discuss this as part of the communications working group. We have a lot of stuff kind of hanging out on the communications working group channel that like we're a bit backlogged at the moment. But yeah, we can discuss this. We could also maybe talk about it in the DEI working group as well, because I think it's got a DEI component to it. Um, so yeah, but I want to I do want to make sure we have time. Um, I don't know that we're going to get to everything, but um, let's go ahead and go forward and we will definitely continue this um, conversation. Thank you so much, Mary Blessing, for getting all this documented and getting this rolling. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it. I think it's going to be awesome. So thank you. Um, not to put anyone on the spot, uh, if there is no update yet for Chaos Con Africa, that's completely valid. I just wanted to put it on here in case there was. No major updates yet. Um, but uh, we have been, I kind of reached out to some um, Justin um, because he mentioned he was going to be at uh, Open Source Community Africa this year to do a keynote at ChaosCon Africa. So I'm still, um, we're still trying to conclude on that, but we've been doing minor planning, so no major updates yet. Okay. Um, so the next uh, item on here is purple chips, purple chips. I'm just saying, we, say? we, uh, <laughs> we have the chips on their way for Chaos Con in May, and uh, they are purple. That's good. I, we haven't we haven't had purple yet. I meticulously went through my collection of Chaos Con chips to ensure that I was selecting a novel yet non-obnoxious color. Mm -hmm. Now I want to go there because in my collection. Yeah. Well, you don't get one if you don't go. <laughs> Actually, I, I ordered 200, so that means. Yeah, I'm sure we could probably find a way to give them to people. It was like, it was was like $3 kidding. more to order 200 compared to 150, and I'm like, sure. <laughs> oh, is this in Vancouver? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I'll be there. I thought this was the one in Africa. I can send them chips also. What's, what's the value breakdown for the color of the chips? Well, the purple one chips purple are the most. Blues. One the purple's the most valuable. It's like a billion dollar note from the U.S. Treasury. <laughs> I think we've had a, like two or three blue. Yeah. On my shoulder. And there was a black one. And a green one. Yep. I think the green one's the one I missed because I was not in Ireland. Does this say, what does it say on it? Can this is just our web URL. I made them small so they weren't obnoxious in the document. Will this writing be as small as the writing on our last chips? I think not, but no, I don't it's know It's hard not. to get less than 1.5. Yeah. <laughs> does it have the date and location or? No, we haven't done that on? before, at least in my collection. Maybe the green ones have that. We have some that have the Chaos Con Europe 2023 Brussels. 20, really? Did I not get those? Maybe, um, I guess. Uh, blue ones say Brussels, oh, yeah, green ones yeah. say Seattle. Yeah, my eyes, I have to get my bifocals to see that, but yep. <laughs> I do see it has the event date on there, but uh, that is so far the only one with an event date. Um, so, um, can we still change it or is it already ordered? 
I mean, I can I can order some others with you. Two hundred more. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like mind. you got the poker chips. I mean, these are generic and useful across chaos community events. They are. There you I go. Can... So we'll get them out until they're gone. Write it in, Sean. What? Just yeah. hand write it on, on each one. I've, fine, I've got fine, a Sean. I've got a fine tipped uh, marker here, so I'm ready. To, I'll be ready when they get here. <laughs> See, now they're even more valuable because they have your signature on them, Sean. That's right. Even more collectible. Take that to the bank. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, we have about nine minutes, and this is kind of a big <laughs> topic. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Should we just quick. hold on that? Is that okay? That's I don't know how urgent fine. that is. No, that's fine. Okay. Um, so let's talk about this Africa Open Source Series with Zoom webinar. Whoa, exciting. Okay, I put that in there. Yeah, tell us about that. So, um, sometime two weeks ago, um, Matt, Elizabeth, and I kind of like talked about, um, you know, shifting focus for Chaos Africa to educate um, Africans about like, um, you know, open source, because um, something I noticed was we get like a lot of people come into Chaos Africa and it, good percentage over 70 or even 80 are new to open source so that was the idea um to kind of like shift the focus a, a little bit um and focus on more of education so when when i um told the community members about this we had like a very interesting conversation and everybody was excited about doing it and we thought about doing a zoom webinar um Last year, we did more of Twitter spaces, but we're shifting to Zoom webinars this year so we can get people to join and also do workshops. You know, people can participate better because Twitter spaces do not really allow for that. So we are launching like the first series um, and the first episode. We've we released it last. Uh, we haven't started. It's going to be this week, Thursday, but over 100 folks have registered. So that's really exciting for the first one. Um, so the major thing is just going to be uh, kind of like a workshop around what open like what open source is and using the first contribution to repo to help folks add their names to and contribute to make their first contribution to open source. So that's what's going to be around, um, and we hope to do more um, things around um, open source education and get folks like with the series. So that's the idea for that open source series. It's going to happen monthly. It's going to be on a monthly cadence. So yeah, I'm excited about it. That's that's really exciting. That's an incredible number of signups that, that you have for that. That is, that's just fantastic. Will there be a recording available afterwards or, and it's okay yeah. if there's not, yeah, there will be. It, I set it to automatically record, so we'll just have it as a playlist on the Chaos YouTube. Awesome. So, Ruth, one of the things I was thinking about based on our conversation, so with the focus on, which I think is a great focus of helping people, you know, just um, understand open source and become more involved in open source, not necessarily focusing on the Chaos Project, but open source at large. Have you thought about how to kind of help people navigate like the you know 10 million different projects that are out there? I mean, it's kind of similar to the same conversation we have of helping people joining chaos. There's so many different things you can do, like kind of getting that person aligned with their interests. You know, so if somebody comes to to um, your event, and you talk about getting involved in open source at large, like how to help them begin that journey with a particular project or how to think about that? I, I don't know that I have an answer. Yeah, and I don't, I don't yeah that's, that's a very great question. And um, in the past, something I have done and, you know, and, and that's even speaks to um, how a lot of like Africans have come into the project as well is when I speak at events, I, I say, here's an open source project you can contribute to and say chaos and then people join. And I have also seen people in Chaos Africa also do this when they speak at events, they recommend the chaos project to a lot of people. 
So um, something that I have thought about is, you know, with the Chaos Corn Africa coming up is we can have a hackathon where we build something like, something like an awesome list and just curate. And, and I see that they look like different ways, different projects, like categories of projects that people can contribute to. And then we have that as a list or, you know, on a GitHub repo, or we can we can form an idea around this. So we can point people to that repository or that uh, that database and just say, okay, this is, if you're a community manager, these are the communities that are, or these are the projects that are, you know, for your skill set or something yeah. around. So that's one thing that we can do. Um, to recommend projects to people and you can put it out there if you want your project to be listed here you can just you know send in create an issue and do something so we there are a couple of ideas we can you know gotcha so like a, a project would say i'm interested in like welcoming newcomers is that right that's what the issue would be about yeah like it would okay. be like I'm interested in being on this list so at, okay. at the basic level it's just a list of different mm -hmm. projects that are maybe categorized by different programming languages or um, tech tech stacks or something like that. And then mm -hmm. the project say, I want to be on this list because then for that list, we get a lot of we get a lot of contributors that are interested in contributing to open source. So they want to be on that list, they just apply as an issue and just open up an issue and then they get added to the list. I'm wondering if there's a way for us to identify projects who are really excellent in the newcomer experience. Ah, oh, that part will be hard. Uh, I know. I'm just thinking out loud, like how to. I don't some know. of the things, some of the things we've I've, we've talked about before are like uh, first timers only tags on issues, and uh, Augers had three pull requests from new contributors in the last six weeks from that tag, so. I think it may be a useful way to say, you know, it basically communicates that the maintainer team was going to help you complete this pull request. And so you're not just thrown into the end of the pool. You're as a first time contributor going to get a little bit more support from the project. Um, so maybe not pointing people to projects, but maybe having them look for tags like first timers only um, and then try to find an alignment with their interests. I yeah. Sorry, I have two quick comments. One is um, when I uh, when I was running PHP Women with another person, um, we we started like a partnership kind of program where a project would um, basically we had like a checklist and if they could complete everything like they had a code of conduct, they had like documentation for newcomers. There there was like a, a list of things that they had to check off, and then we would say, okay, we're we're partnering with you. We feel safe enough to send our members to you as a new project. So maybe there's something there where it's like an unofficial partnership or or something like that. Um, and then the second thing I was going to mention is this website. I think it's ovo.org. And you might be able to do something with them. Um, they have a way to find open source projects if you're an individual contributor and you want to join a project. And there's all these things that you can search on. So there might be something with them that you can um, you know partner with or like build on so you're not having to start from scratch so i just want interesting to what is this here. is this a company it is it's a it's yeah. a platform but um and i think they you know projects will sign up and and then they connect through an api to some new issues that they have and you can you know search for oh i want to see all the beginner friendly issues okay now i want to see you know, what how many re like yeah yeah i'm familiar with all of you I, so, yeah so chat with the co-founder so yeah I do love you can be another way and yeah Matt I was just going to say we have project badging for that as well so yes I mean in the comments I just put if they have a chaos all-in bronze badge when we get that deployed yeah I mean, that, that is a signal of <laughs> a variety of things yeah uh, one is a the plus. newcomer experience a plus 100 <laughs> All right, sadly, we are out of time. Um, so if there's more to talk about, we can continue it next week, not a problem at all. Give everybody a chance to kind of marinate, <laughs> let, let things Sounds good. sit for a minute. Um, yeah, and I hope everybody has a great day and uh, we will see you all next week. See you next week. Take care, bye. Bye, thanks everybody.